Um, we're going to go ahead and get started. I really appreciate everybody being here. Um, for those of you that I haven't met, um, I'm Valerie Locke. I work in IT support, and I am the trainer for this project. This is Jason Goslin, and he is our consultant um, for change management, and he's here with us during this project from a company called Sierra Cedar. So um, we're really, really thrilled to see so many people in here. Um, it's been a long time since I saw you last. We, we did an online meeting last time. Did that work out fairly well for everyone? Great. OK, so because of the nature of so many people, we're trying to get creative with ways that we can get information to you. So not every time has to be a come in and sit in the boardroom meeting, all right? So let's have a look at the agenda for today. Um, we're going to have a project update. We're going to go over the impact analysis sheet. We're going to look at some numbers of participation. Um, do you remember when we talked about ADCAR the first time Jason gave us um, some information about change management, how you work through different steps? And the, Does anyone remember what that first letter A stood for? Awareness. 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 Thank you. Awareness is the first one, and that's what we were doing in the beginning. We were building awareness. We have think articles. You all were giving out um, handouts to your staff. You were having meetings with them. You were sending emails, that type of thing. So now we're moving into the next step, which is desire. And Jason will give you some more information on that when we get there. We're also going to talk about some logistics and scheduling information around training. So we can be getting ready to train you and also for you then to train your staff. We have an activity today, and I called it a treasure hunt, where you're going to get your hands on the Workday product. And we have laptops. We'll pass those out, and we'll explain um, when we get to that part of our presentation how that will work. We also have an aw some awards for those of you who are really going after things. We will talk about some of the two-way communications, and then, of course, we'll follow up with what our next steps are. So Jason <coughs> is going to talk to you about the project updates. Hi, everybody. I'm glad to be back in Castle Rock, especially with this weather that you guys have here. Is this normal December weather? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, no. It's normal summer weather. Just one more reason to move here. OK. Wait till February. Yeah. It's uh, 20 degrees in Iowa, so it's a little bit better here. Um, so the project updates. Uh, right now, there's a lot of testing going on. Um, we have parallel testing, system testing, and user acceptance testing that is coming up pretty soon. Pretty much the uh, systems are built, or three of the four prototypes are built, and what they're trying to do now is break the system, essentially. Um, so unit testing is nearing complete, and the prototypes, like I said, are being built. Uh, user acceptance testing, are any of you part of that? A few of you? Okay. That's going to be coming up January 8th and 9th. Uh, and that will be a great kind of an intro into the training that we're going to be doing in January, which is coming up really, really soon. Uh, we're like halfway through this, by the way. Uh, it's coming up fast. So uh, user acceptance testing just focuses on the employee self-service stuff that you guys um, is going to be very similar to what you do now. And then the manager self-service as well. So um, train the trainers in January. And probably the most important thing is the project is on track. Any questions about the nuts and bolts of the project? I'd like to jump in for a second. The UAT, the user acceptance training, I'll be sending out an email to those of you that um, offer to assist with us. We're going to have a fairly small group of about 20 people. So you might have offered to help. And we don't actually, I don't want to say we don't need you, but we can only accommodate a very small group. Um, it's not designed to be a big giant mass of people like this. So it will be a very small group. So I will be sending that out within the week so that you can plan in your schedule that um, you're going to be out and just double check that you're still available. Good? OK. Oh, boy. You read that OK? <coughs> this is the impact analysis. They haven't memorized. Kind of a snapshot. <laughs> we are not going to read this. Uh, what I wanted to do is just see if you guys had any questions and kind of highlight the, uh, the big things. Now that we have this pointer. Um, kind of the big things we want to highlight are the absence management, the fact that classified employees 
and teachers will continue using Kronos and Aesop. Aesop? Fables? No. Uh, that's the biggest one. And then probably, other than that, the one that's going to be affecting people the most are the creating the requisition. Um, delegation rules, there'll be a lot more capability with delegation with Workday, so that'll be good. Uh, so all the administrative assistants can do the principal's work, right? We know that. Uh, and other than that, employees will be logging into Workday in May to do open enrollment. So it will be done in Workday. Uh, any questions about the big impacts? Well, this is easy. Okay. You want to do the button numbers? Sure. All right. Um, what I've been doing is I've been collecting all the information and putting together some metrics on how we're doing with communicating with staff. As we've said, every single employee will need to log into Workday to do their e-benefits during open enrollment season. So we don't want to wait till mid-May and have a crush of people tell us, hey, I can't log in, I need to get this done, it's going to close, I won't have benefits. So we want to circumvent that and go ahead and get everybody logged in in April, make sure they can log in, make sure they're nowhere to go, they won't be able to do their benefits then, but at least they can go in there and, and they verified that they can log in. So that's our biggest goal right now is to get people in there and feel comfortable with what that system looks like. So I've been asking you every time that we have a meeting, I send you a little email about a week later and I say, hey, did you meet with your administrator? Did you present the materials to your staff? Who presented the information to your staff? So the numbers I've been collecting in September, we have 99 unique sites, okay? So in IT, because um, our building is at the West Support Center, we have several departments in our building, so we don't have one person set up as a will for each department. That makes sense, right? So we have 99 unique sites that we are trying to reach. Out of the 99 unique sites, only 76 people, or 76 of those sites, had materials delivered to them that I know of for sure. In October, 75 were only communicated to. That's not going to work. We have to have everyone get communicated to every month. Remember, we're building awareness. If we don't tell them now, we're not going to be able to have them with any desire. They're going to just be saying, hey, I don't even know what Workday is. All right? But I'm happy to say that in November, we had 96 out of 99. However, that being said, our goal is still 99. I need every single site, because what if Legend High School was one of those, not that it was, was one of those. That's a huge population. That's not saying, hey, student records didn't hear about it. There's, what, three people in student records? As opposed to 99, I'm talking about sites. I'm not talking about individuals. So we could be missing a giant population of people if not every single site gets communicated to. So I just really want to drive that point home, and I'm probably going to bring it up a couple times today because it is very, very important. January training. You all, on the last email that I sent you, there was a link to go ahead and sign up for your training slot in January. And I understand it's kind of hard to know what your schedule is going to be like in January, but I only have a finite am amount of slots. Each of those sessions is going to be limited to 25 people. So what I would like you to do is now, if you haven't already, get in there and sign up. I've only got not even half of the wills signed up at this point. So I am going to be emailing you again in a week like I always do. The link to the training will be in there and please, please sign up for a slot, okay? It's very critical. Every single will needs to attend this January training. This isn't an optional training. So communications, not optional. Training, not optional. These are critical to make this project work well. There you go, Jason. Okay, so I just want to take a look at the ad car model again that we discussed a few months ago. Um, these are the different processes that people go through. Awareness of the need for change. I feel like you've done a very good job of that. Again, the 96 out of 99 this past month, that's pretty good, okay? Um, desire is kind of the next one, and it kind of runs simultaneously, actually, 
with awareness as well, but we just kind of want to focus on that one for this meeting. And then knowledge on how to change. Today we're going to get a, a sneak peek in our activity where you guys are actually going to get a touch workday for the first time. So uh, training is really where the knowledge happens and, and the ability. And then reinforcement to sustain the change um, come April, making sure that everybody has what they need to go forward. So if we look at desire and what that means, I mean, it's, it's pretty simple, really. Um, you know, it's, it's when a person says, I'm in, right? I will be part of this change. And if they, you know, look like this and they're really excited, that's all the better. Um, but you can't really make somebody have desire, but there are certainly some things that we can do to try to encourage them um, to be excited about it, right? Some tactics for building desire. Active and visible sponsorship. Uh, this is the first, is this the first meeting that we've had that we haven't had? Um, one of our sponsors talk at the beginning, but Brian's given you his personal cell phone number and, you know, his, uh, his desk number. So he's pretty, uh, I, I would say, active and visible. Strong sponsorship coalition. We've seen from many of the administrators, just through talking to you guys, that they're very supportive. And if they're not, we've asked you to talk to us. Brian has asked you to talk to him. Um, personal engagement by Wills. This is where you guys come in. Right, this is where you're talking, spreading the message, uh, being cheerleaders, being positive, things like that for Workday. So hopefully you've been doing that. Uh, proactive management of resistance. We, we told you guys at the beginning that we wanted to hear any resistance that was happening. Um, now it's been pretty early, so maybe people are just like, well, that's off in April, I'm not gonna worry about it. Um, but at some point, they might start getting resistant, and if they already have, we just want to hear about it so we can help mitigate any of those uh, risks or any of that re resistance. Uh, employee involvement, again, trying to get communications out to them every month and trying to get them into training in March. These are ways that we can mitigate risks, right? And then incentives. Today, I think through seeing the demonstrations, through participating in the treasure hunt, you're going to see uh, some of the benefits of Workday, and that's going to provide incentives. We're not going to pay people to use Workday, but uh, you know they will have to sign on to Workday if they want to get benefits and things like that. So there are definitely incentives. Um, and any other tactics that you guys can think of for building desire? Basically, you just got to communicate. Okay. Um, Right. The teachers especially, but everyone is just so busy right. that if we bombard them with too much, I think that's going to give you more resistance than anything. But the easier we can make this and the less we, I don't want to say the less we put out there, but they, they just don't want to be bombarded is what I'm saying. Sure, sure. And I'll be interested to see after today uh, what you guys think about the ease of using Workday. Be really interested. So we'll come back to that. Anything else? Okay. Valerie, get back to you. Back onto my earlier comment. If you haven't already signed up for the January training, I'm going to ask you to please um, get in there and sign up. I am going through those lists. If you haven't signed up, I'm going to be nagging at you a little bit. But I have other things I need to do as well. So if you would just please save me that step and go ahead and sign up. Um, and it, we are going to be at the West Support Center, which isn't too far from here. Um, let me think. Those are four-hour sessions. And I have some scheduled for mornings and some scheduled for afternoons because I know not everyone's schedule is going to be accommodating for one end of the day or the other. So that should be helpful to you. February, we're going to have the one-on-one -on -one sign ups. That is designed to be time that you sit with Jason to go over how to train, being comfortable with the materials that you have, actually do a little practice. We had an idea when we were talking through this that if you have a buddy and the two of you want to sign up um, one slot next to the other and you want to come at the same time and have that two hours together and sort of tag team, that might be a little bit more fun than just sitting with Jason. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> Sorry, Jason. 
but it is a little bit more dynamic when you have more people in the room. I would say they'll limit it to two. I, I think if you get three, that three hours is going to be a bit much. But I would say if you have a friend, uh, we're not going to manage that for you. So if you, there's a slot that works for you and a friend, great. But I just don't have the capacity to manage those schedules. So I'll use that sign up genius again. And I believe you can see who signed up with you. Perfect. And that way you can take a look and sign up together. All right, and then how many days till go live? It's only 112. That may seem like a lot, but that counts the winter break. That counts weekends. So it's not as many as you think. And if you ever want to know how many days we are until um, the go live day, if you look on our DCSD work site, work, work day at DCSD website, sorry, I said that backwards. I did put a little ticker counter in the corner and each day, one day goes by. So if you're ever wondering how many days out, that little tool's out there for you. All right, let's talk a little bit about how you're gonna train your site. We've been doing a little brainstorming and actually I have to thank Tammy. She sent me an email about a month ago that kind of got me started thinking, how are we gonna manage this physically? It's not as simple as you think because it's not like Google Mail, where everything in your Google Mail, if you were part of that effort, is your own stuff. Right? You get in and you make an email, you make a calendar event, you make a document and it's specific to you. In Workday, we have to think about the fact that there's processes that go between an employee and their manager. All right? The other thing that's going to happen is we need to start training people in March. We won't have a live database for people to log into until April. So they won't be able to log in themselves. So we will have a training database that you as a will can log into. And my thought is, you could hold some demo sessions, just like we're going to kind of do today, um, and, and we've done in previous meetings, where it's sort of a show and tell, hey, here's what Workday looks like. Here's how you can do some searching. Here's how you can find things. This is where your pay stubs will live. Give them a little bit of a comfort level with a demo session. Depending on your site, maybe you have to hold multiples. The, the probability of Legend High School, and I'm sorry I keep picking on Legend, it's just so huge, um, is the reality is you're probably not going to get everybody to attend the very first and only demo session. Okay? TJ in risk management, she might be able to corral all her people at the same time. So just think about that. You may need to hold several of those demo sessions and just keep it to an hour. You'll just be a little show and tell. All right, then once April comes, that's when they'll be able to log in for themselves. You're going to have them come in, and maybe have some workshop session time where people can come in and feel like there's a warm body if they have any questions and go ahead and get their hands on it. You want to make sure that everyone in your building has logged into Workday. So we highly suggest that you keep attendance on this. This is an idea for you if you wish to use it. You could send out a Google form to your staff after you've done your demo session and after the 1st of April to ask them, did you log into Workday successfully? Could be the first question. And were you able to find your pay stub? I would say would be a good first kind of, hey, do you know where to go to get that critical information? And then the second question could be, do you feel like you would like some additional assistance? Then as you poll your site, maybe the smaller population of 100 people, maybe only 20 people say, yes, I'd really like a little bit of hand-holding. I feel like I need some additional assistance. You could hold a couple different workshop sessions, and I would keep those numbers down. I would not invite your entire school to attend that and just have it be an open house because that could get a little difficult to manage. Have them sign up for those, and that way you are there to assist them and, hey, it's right over here. Do you see this pay app? Click that. See, here you go. And that way you can be more of a mentor and guide them through for those people that feel like they need a little help, extra help. You might have a tech teacher who says, hey, this is a piece of cake. I don't need any extra help. I'm good to go. You now have your Google form that has recorded that that tech teacher has indeed logged in and they don't require any more assistance. That will help you kind of keep track of how they're doing. Does that make sense to you all? And we can talk about this. I have it as a link on here so you could look at it, but I think we're going to skip it for today because I really want you to get your hands on this. And we can talk about it further in January and February. Um, I did make a sample Google form that you can use that's on the Workday website. 
you can take a peek at it and see if that would be helpful to you. The idea, it's just an idea, but I sure wouldn't want to walk around with a clipboard and say, hey, Tammy, did you log in? And she's like, I'm too busy to talk to you right now. Right, so that would be pretty unmanageable. So I would say automate where you can. And like I do with you all, follow up with those that don't respond. And remember, I know I keep saying this, and I'm going to keep saying it over and over, is every single staff member has to log into Workday. So we don't want anybody to slip through the cracks. You don't want to come at the end of April and discover, hey, two-thirds of my staff have never even logged into this thing. Okay, we, we're going to be grabbing metrics out of Workday to see how many logins we have. So all this stuff is being tracked, and it's being tracked pretty heavily. We really want this project to go well. I don't want people at the end of it to say, hey, I never even heard about it. I don't know what you're talking about. That's our goal is by starting this early that we have people feeling comfortable. And last but not least, if you are going to be doing workshop, workshop sessions, if you are going to be giving meetings and demos, start thinking about getting on agendas now and booking any rooms. It's not always that easy to get meeting space. And if you're going to do a demo for 100 people, you're going to need a large space. There's not very many spaces that can accommodate this many people. All right, now let's talk a little bit about the manager self-service. It's a little different because they have processes. So let's say, for example, Tam I'm going to pick on Tammy the whole time. That's what, That's what you get for being in the front row. Actually, I should pick on Amanda because I told her I was going to leave her alone. Um, let's say you have an employee that wants to enter a leave of absence. They have a process where the employee goes in there, enters the information for leave of absence, and that kicks off a process that goes to the manager. The manager now needs to know what to do with it. So they have a different view of Workday. Certainly, um, they have actions that need to t be taken, and so they need a little bit different training than your general staff population would need. So I'm thinking for your managers, you might hold a demo session that is more of a two-hour Spend the first hour on ESS, unless you can get them to come to your general one. And then for the second hour, maybe you talk about some real specific things like how, how to work with that additional pay app, which is what we used to call it. It's now called one-time pays. How are you going to um, deal with your, um, we now have some <coughs> segment of the population that's going to be requesting time off. As a matter of fact, the managers themselves will be requesting time off where they never needed to do that in the past. They just kept it on a kind of a general spreadsheet, I think. And then also, how do you create the job requisition? That was a whole big paper manual process, right? That has changed completely in Workday. They're going to be starting that off before it goes into Taleo. They're going to kick off that process. So much different tasks in your general population. So they're going to need a little different kind of training. And then once you've shown it to them, then of course you're going to need to be available. As they're working through the job rec, maybe they get to a certain screen and say, gee, I really don't remember what I need to do here. Let me grab you know, Cindy to come in and, and give me a hand with this. So you need to think about being available. And now for the best part. Yes, I'm sorry. Um, we have a question. Um, I just wanted to bring up there's some concern on in the PK-12 <coughs> department about the twi uh, first and 15th payday, and I understand now instead of every two weeks, it's going to be on the first and the 15th. She jumped into our project. Oh. <laughs> she jumped ahead. We're going to get to that. There has been a slight change in the way the pay is going to um, occur. I don't have a lot of details on it yet. Jason is going to touch on that a little bit later. The concern, though, is that um, the concern is that really getting the word out so that every employee in the system knows that their pay is going to change because I know we have some employee groups that don't always check email, don't right. get on the website, mm -hmm. don't read newsline, that kind of thing. Um, so if they're a swing shift custodian, um, they need to know. I didn't think too much about it, but if you've got a car payment or something that's coming out on the 22nd, and on the 15th, your check is now half of what it was on the 20th. You've got to start budgeting early to make sure that you've got funds to cover all of your bills. And so that's a real concern that in our department that everybody, I know it's a concern district-wide, but I ask and bring it up. 
Yeah, we don't have all the details on from payroll just yet. They're just still kind of working through all that. I promise as soon as we get that, if it's between meetings, I might even just send that out as an additional, um, additional communication to you. Okay, are you guys ready to play in Workday? Okay, so Valerie created this awesome treasure hunt. And essentially what you guys are gonna be doing is we broke you into groups by when your birthday is, 12 groups. And um, what we're gonna do is break you into groups Everybody's going to get a sheet. It's the same sheet, same information. Uh, once you get together, it's, it's kind of a group team activity. Um, the goal is to answer all the questions in 20 minutes. See how we did January. Who is Steven's emergency contact? That's correct. February. How many employees does Steven manage? Correct. Who makes the most money of his employees? March. David. Zing Shu. Zing Shu. If you can pronounce his name, you get extra credit. Bang Zhu. $146,000 yep. uh -huh. and some change. Who makes more, Steven or the employee above? Where are we on, April? I didn't even see that question. Who's the highest degree? Oh, okay. We get really extra credit if you get that one. Uh, the highest degree is a what, April? PhD. PhD, very good. May. Uh, what is the name of the position that Ross Lutz is in? Assistant Professor of College. No. EA4. EA4. What? Aww. 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 And David Moore, July, is in the position of what? Director of Administration. Director of Administration. Who does he report to? David Bessick. Very good. Uh, David Bessick. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> How much is the total compensation for Zhang? $90,000. Yes, $90,000. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Uh, How many withholdings is Stephen claiming on his W-4? Two. 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 What is the mailing address for Douglas County High School? 1010 Commonwealth Ave, Newton, Massachusetts. Trick question. We wanted to make sure you looked it up. That's right. That's right. No, I didn't. I'm not sure where we're at. Where are we all? October? How many workers at the DCHS location? October? I'm on December. Okay, December. December. 236. Very good. Okay, so then anybody and everybody. On what date did Stephen receive his last pay? 829. What is the phone number to reach Jill? Very nice. In stereo. Does anyone remember what Jill looked like? I just, that's just a little extra credit. Which company did Steven choose for his dental coverage? Enhance. Who's the manager of the IT help desk? Stuart Fitzpatrick. Who does this person manage? Sanchez. 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 Very good. How old is Steven? Down to the day. And can he see his own employees, how old they are? No. no. No instructions, and you guys knocked it out of the park. Pretty, uh, yeah. pretty intuitive? Yeah. So that tells me I've been slaving over instructions for <laughs> no good reason. <laughs> you know, there's many yeah. that are going to want them. True. Okay, 
Did you, everybody have a good time? Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Good deal. All right. Next thing coming up, I know I was, this is maybe just a tad of a downer, but I was talking to you about the importance of communicating with your staff. I just want you to know that there is a matrix sheet that I'm keeping all these uh, metrics onto. And as you can see, I've got a little color coding going on there. And I basically, I'm trying to capture three things every time. Did you meet with your administrator? Did you give a, some sort of communication to your staff? And who gave that information? So if you look at my sheet, I do have reds. This is a real snapshot as of today. Um, I have reds of people telling me, no, we did not communicate with our staff. I have blues. Those are people that never replied to my um, questionnaire. Those are the blues. So I have to assume that's a no. I can't assume that that's a yes. And then, of course, the happy filled in ones with text are, yes, I met with my administrator. You can see the material was presented on line number three by the admin. And also, I have your attendance as well. And you notice in that 917, I had some people attend online because they weren't able to make the in-person meeting. So that's what that means. So it's critical that you either attend or you attend online through um, a, that's why we have these things recorded. OK, so if you can't make one, I always have that available to you the week after. It takes about a week for David to do all the processing that needs to happen to get those uploaded. Okay, so all that stuff is being measured, and not only is it being measured, but I will tell you that this is being looked at by um, Brian Caesar and the other um, project people for this um, workday implementation. So, like we've said from the beginning, this we're doing this in a very different manner than any other projects have been rolled out. And I think if we can show that people are participating and that we are getting really good responses from our um, wills that are coming in and assisting that yes, we're communicating out, and then at the end of the project, we can say, look, we had 90% of our population log into Workday. That's a really big deal, and I think it'll look great on your um, evaluations as well as mine. So <laughs> just saying, it's important to me too, but um, I do want to let you know that this stuff is being captured. So please, I know I harp on you a lot about, and I email you sometimes specifically, please, please fill out those um, questionnaires. I try to make them as brief as possible. Yes, no, pick from a pull down and not make you do too much. But it is really important that we get this information. Okay. So, but on that note, I'm going to flip it over. We do have people, as you can see, going all the ways across that have attended. They've done their materials. They've attended the meetings either online and they have made sure that communications have gone out. So, if you are someone who has got your administrator to present the material at least once, and you have um, sent out communications all three times. So you have done September, October, November, and I'm assuming that you'll do December. OK, we're almost done. Um, from the beginning, we've been talking about two-way communications and just making sure that you guys feel like you can talk to us as an outlet uh, if there's concerns and things like that. Remember the Contact Us form is a way that you can just online you know, if you want to ask a question, just go to that contact us, and Valerie gets all of those. I get all those. So, um, is there anything that you guys wanted to talk about today as like a group that you're hearing? Any concerns like that? And if not, that's okay. Uh, but we just wanted to give you an opportunity if you did. Yes. No. So, and it's the, the, the proper term now that they're using is semi monthly, which means it will not be every two weeks, but it'll be twice a month. And they have not chosen the dates yet. And there's still some information that they're working out. We're not trying to hide anything from you. As soon as we know, we'll let you know. Okay, and what we know right now is it's just going to be twice a month, not every two weeks. Yes, question. Will it still be accrual? Will it still be accrual? I don't want to take a chance of answering them because I just don't feel like I'm an authority on the subject. I did send over everybody that has sent me a payroll question. I bundled them all up. Marcy Ch Jader has all of those in a list and she will be getting back to me with specifics. So if you have specific questions like that, please send them on the contact form. And I prefer if you'd send them on the contact form as opposed to emailing me 
just so I can make sure they're all together. clumped together and I, that they get addressed because I do go back and forth and look at that sheet. But I, I just don't feel comfortable answering payroll questions. I think that's really her place to do that. So. And we promise we will let you know as soon as we do. And we know there's a lot of concern. Uh, it won't take place until July, so we feel like we still have adequate time to make sure that everybody has the communication. So, yes? Is the program going to be in Spanish for some people? I don't believe so. It's a good question. I know that they have Spanish workday. Um, as far as whether or not that's going to be turned on, that's a good I question. I haven't seen any options for that, but I'll look into it. Will uh, there be an option of having workday in Spanish? No. The answer is no. It will not be in Spanish. I just got an answer. The answer is no. <laughs> Any other questions? How secure is this cloud? There's a link in the FAQs that will take you to a giant document about all the security. That's also something I can't just spout off. It's just too technical. There's too much stuff in there. But if you go to the DCSD, or Workday at DCSD website, in FAQs, it'll take you, that's one of the questions about security, and it'll take you to a document that gives you all kinds of information. And that's directly from Workday. It's very secure. That's the quick answer. But very the better secure. answer is you should read that if you're concerned about it. Other questions? Nope. Sorry, one more. Sure. Um, last week, one of the wordings that came up were pay slips, uh, you know, pay stops. Same. And things like that. Are we trying to, are we changing wording? Um, or are we going to keep, is the wording a workday thing? Or is that our choice? So for those of you in the back that couldn't hear, she was asking, thank you. She was asking whether or not we're gonna do, is the wording pay slips or pay stubs? We tend to refer to them as pay stubs. Workday has them listed as pay slip. Um, I still call it a check stub, that's how old <laughs> I am. But I it's, it's think it's semantics, but it is called pay slip in Workday. So if you wanna flip to the new lingo, that's what it's called there. Any other questions? Great. That's the new info was us wanting to make sure we were going to tell you about the payroll thing. So that's what that bullet was. That We already covered it. You beat us to it. So here are the next steps. Uh, as always, we'll get you out of here on time. Last slide. Uh, January 14th, our meeting, this meeting, has been canceled because you will spend a lot of time with us in the training. We figured four hours is enough for one month. Um, December. Communications, as always, are ready on the website, so they're pre-packaged and ready to go for you guys right now if you get on there. Um, goals for next time, again, sign up for training. We've got 51. We'd like to have everybody signed up um, before we leave for break. be a great goal. Um, reserve, reserve your rooms and resources for March and start kind of thinking about that because that's going to come up faster than you think. And then finally start spreading desire and keep your awareness campaign going. Um, and keep answering questions and keep bringing questions to us as well. Yes, way in the back. For rolling it out, like for having them try it, can we get a sheet like that that they can go in and do the yeah, oh, that 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 mm -hmm. Not yet, but when we have, when we are at Go Live, yes, you can. Ha we'll give you materials that you can use with your staff and have them log into their own account and make sure that they can hey, go look up and see what your, what your total compensation is. Absolutely. I think it makes it easier than just having bullets on a, yes. on a screen. So, yes, we will make sure you all have, just like we've been doing all along, we'll make sure that you have the materials that you need and you're not reinventing for your site what everybody else needs. I'm going to do my best that you have the materials that you need, and if you'd like to customize them, you're more than welcome to do that. <laughs> Our training in our building, though, will we have, um, will we have sort of like the, the practice like we had today? Because we don't want to put our own page up there. So her, her question is, will, 
her question is, are, is she going to have a test database in order to do the demo? And yes, I don't think that you need to get up there and show where your social security number is. Um, <laughs> I think that it's all well and good that you only see your own. So um, there is a training database that will be ready for us December 22nd. So mm, you'll all be on break. But um, when you come back and you do your January session, you will be logging into the training database. Okay, so we are going to make sure that you can log into the training da database. I have a request to get some scrambled data so that when you are demoing things, you are not showing your own information. Absolutely agree with you. Employee database or man like assuming today's was a manager database. Yes, it was. That person that you logged on today was obviously both manager and employee. And that's why you saw the My Team worklet. Your regular employee, like when I log in, I will not see my team. So will we have the employee one to show our employees versus the manager so they don't think they can see that information? That's what I'm trying to get. Okay. Because I think it's better to demo what they're really going to see. Yes. Will we also have it to show our managers as well? So Cindy asked if she would have it to show her managers. That's what I'm working on. I put in a request today to get some um, different kinds of setups so that when you go in there you can practice and not muck anything up. I'm with you. I don't want to actually touch anything real and request a title change of goddess and then have <laughs> Nancy Bauer hit reject. <laughs> okay? So we are working on that, definitely working on that. I'm in, and because I don't have this training database yet, I can't really tell you exactly what it's going to look like. But I've put in, like I said, I've put in some requests so that we have the best opportunity for you guys to get in, like today, and not be concerned about who you're seeing and what you're seeing. Right. So once we um, go to our training, then after we've left there, will we still have access to that <coughs> test site to be able to play on it on our own? Right. So we need I don't more know the connect. answer to that yet. Because I'm, what I'm thinking, if I can get them to agree to it, is to set up a group of, say, 25 teams, you know, manager with people underneath, and then that data would need to be reset for that next group to come in and practice with it. And if, if you and she have the same login, and then it's, it's going to mess it up for the next person doing the test. So I can't answer that. I don't really see that as a possibility for us, unfortunately. It's the overhead to keep that up and have 100 test, site, test teams set up so you each have your own. I'm thinking they're going to nix that. So. What things in place change that need to then be approved and what things they change that just get changed? Okay, her question was, will, will you know what things need to be approved or not? Yes, because when you go in there, at the bottom, there'll be a submit button. If it's something you can change all on your own, let's say your phone number, you'll just hit save and you're done. If it's something like, I want a new business title, there will be a submit button, and then that moves it along the process to the next person or persons that need to look at it. There's also a process tab. There's also a process tab that will show you the entire process. And so if it needs to go to somebody else, it'll tell you who needs to, is the next step. And then after them, you can see the entire process and see where in the process it is. Right. And I think you guys will like that. And that's something we're definitely going to demo to you so that you're comfortable with that. So let's say your manager puts in a request for a, or job, <coughs> create a job request hard to say. Um, they can see where it is in the process, who's it sitting with it, it's been submitted, but now it's waiting in action, okay, because, you know, budget has to review types of things, and you can see all who's done what. Okay. Questions? These are excellent questions. Thank you very much for in the back. Participating. Teachers' contracts will be in there. Yeah. Teachers' contracts are going to show up as a task to do at that time of the year. Like when I go in there now and I look at the database, there's no contract in there. I need to get more clarification from HR exactly how that's going to look. Maybe I can get a screenshot or something to show you, but I don't think you're going to see them for testing because that wouldn't normally be in there in April. Contracts don't come out until summer. So we'll find, we'll find out. And again, if it's something that you're kind of wondering about, I don't think of all these questions all the time. So send them in on the contact form, and then if I don't know the answer, off they go to the appropriate person. And maybe they haven't thought through, oh, yeah, I need to make sure <laughs> that I have a link to blah out there 
and that helps them because they have a lot on their plate too. They're testing all their processes and making sure everything runs correctly. So there's a lot of bits and pieces that, you know, it's great to have a lot of eyes on things and questions so that we make sure that the system is as flushed out as it needs to be on day one. I don't it might help the group to know that on the 19th, next, next Friday, we have a small group of principals coming in to give their input so that it's more of a school-based friendly type thing. Did you guys all hear what Tammy said? On the 19th, there's a small group of principals that are going to come in and take a look at the Workday system and give their input so that things flow well for schools as well as just in a business department. So they will be giving a good look at it early on to where there's still time to change a process. Maybe it's something that needs to route differently. Maybe it's something that needs a notification sent when something happens. And those are the types of changes that are being made now. Anybody else? Yes. On the manager sales service where you're dealing with the extra pay, creating job regs, will you automatically have the people who work on that loaded into the system? And then will there be an additional training for us that do these extra jobs? The additional pay app, is that what you mean? I saw there was extra pay, time mm -hmm. off, yep. pay, job yep. Those are manager processes and you all will be trained on how to do those. And I have directions written up on how to do those. So if you forget which, who's going to remember every step to every process, they'll be on the website and you can go back and refer to them. And I'm working with HR to find out not just fill in the blank because that's well and good anybody can f pick something from a list and throw it in there but we want to submit it to HR correctly the first time so the more stuff we can get on if this then this if you pick this the reason you would is to pick this so that's what I'm working on with with HR right now quite a bit just to make sure we get as much clarification as possible so that things don't have to be kicked back to the manager to say oh hey you filled this out wrong can you go back and fix it? Let's eliminate as much of that as possible. So I'm sure things will change as, you know, as we're using the system. We may find that you need a little more direction or whatever. I'm not going anywhere. We can always update these directions too. If they're not perfect by April 1, you'll just give me a little slack and we'll just get them fixed for going forward. Did, do you have a question? Yeah, I'm um, managers and delegation. So um, there is one manager, is that correct? Or can there be multiple <coughs> managers? Yeah. And then the delegation piece, like the requesting for postings and things like that, which are often uh, the secretary's function or office person's function, would it then the manager then delegate a specific function like that? So she's asking about delegation. And yes, Workday does accommodate for delegations. And mm -hmm. they can de delegate more than one person. They can delegate for all processes. They can delegate for specific tasks. And we will be definitely going over delegation. No. I'm not sure I'm following. If I'm the manager and Dorinda works for me. I can be your principal, your secretary, your assistant principal, and your bookkeeper all be managers. Yeah. Well, they have managers. I don't think they're going to, the secretary wouldn't be a manager. She would still be the secretary, the administrative assistant with those tasks uh, um, assigned to them. Delegated. Delegated to them. Thank you. Right. That's all a manager is? Yep. So, but it's all security based. So, based on what you need to do, we'll make sure that you get the security to do that, or it'll be a delegation function. So, and Valerie, when we're ready to train those managers within our buildings, will you give us a list of names who need those trainings? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why you guys are the wills. I don't know who is the ma who is the main principal. I don't even know the names of who is the principal for Meadowview Elementary. It would be someone I would have to go look up. But as the will, you're in the building. You know your principal. You know your administrators, and so you need to get them trained. Okay, so I'm not providing my, the list. I guess that's my question. Is it just the principal, or is it the principals and the APs? Is the, there might be somebody else within the building that would. You know, I don't know. For instance, my in my building engineer, he manages people. My kitchen manager manages people. How do I know who I need to train in these okay. these positions? The kitchen will be handled by nutrition services. Okay. 
Okay. So you won't need to worry about, and the O&M has their own group of people for custodial staff okay. and grounds and those types of people. Okay. And I'm actually working with Bridget pretty heavily on making sure that those types of people get communicated to because they're a very difficult group to just even corral. They're right. different All schedules, the they're different places. Mm -hmm. They're very, they're going to be challenged. I'm not going to kid you. That's going to be a challenge. And I've group. included them in my communications do. To, to date. Please do. Every employee training. should be getting communicated to. Okay. So if you, if you, as you send out your information to your entire staff population, you let them know if you are someone that has people under you that you manage, you need to, con you, we need to be in contact with each other and maybe let them help you <coughs> identify Okay. is you do have a, a harder group than okay. say a Meadowview Elementary which is a lot more straightforward. Okay. Yes. Me? Yes. Um, just going on, I'm O&M or I'm operations yeah. and I take care of all the custodians. Okay. So we go through the group meetings in the building in here to process that down to the night crew. Right. So they're getting double information but okay. it's okay. I mean, I don't have a problem with it. You're going to get too much than that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, as much fun Sorry. as I'm having, we're getting <laughs> kicked out of this room. They have another meeting. So thank you for coming, and um, we'll talk to you guys in January. Happy holidays. Thank you.